Good morning. It's going to work better if I turn it on. So five years, right? I'm Chris. I'm one of the persons who started conflict management camp and started DevOps days and started load days and should stop starting conferences. Um, I'm going to talk a bit today before we get the real interesting people about what this conference is about. So, everybody here is in Ghent for at least their first time. Who's been, who was here last year? Who was here the year before? Who's been going to like four of them? Or was this the, f the fourth? The fifth? You guys came to Ghent for conflict management camp five times? Who's been here more than five times? <laughs> yeah, that's right, because the year before we actually did a puppet camp here. Hi, Luke. And, well, we did more of this, but I'll talk about that later. Um, the reason why we are here is basically because years ago, when we were running Low Days, which is like a small conference focused on Linux and open source administration, which we run in Antwerp, um, this guy bumped into me and said, hey, if you ever need a bigger venue, I can host something. I, okay, interesting. But by the way, Low Days, call for paper is open, so send in your talks. It's going to be small again, we hope. It's going to be fun. So Bert came up to me and said, hey, if you need a bigger venue, we can host you at the University of Ghent. And I was like, ah, well, people want to come to Antwerp for Low Days because it's small. What about we do something else there? And then I didn't really have an idea about what to do, but it actually took me a couple of weeks, months, till this dude came up with, hey, uh, can we do something puppeting like around FOSDEM? Okay, James, let's, let's see what we can do. Um, he's moving, otherwise he would be here also. So that's actually the first thing we did. Don set up a site, we did the very first introductions, and we had Puppet Camp 2013. I think it was the second time we had a Puppet Camp in Ghent. I think the first one was when Luke was nagging Patrick and me to run something here. And then, well, we did it, and then this one was, I think, two years later. I think the first one was 2011. And we had two days before FOSDEM. I actually honestly don't even remember it was before FOSDEM. For me, it's always been after FOSDEM. And we closed early on the second day to actually head to the beer event. So there's a number of familiar names on that schedule, people who've been here for a couple of years. Um, back then, we had one track here, and we added open spaces in the afternoon. And we already had a fringe. We had a build cloud day, build an open source cloud day next to it. And this is a picture you folks might remember, I actually see a number of familiar places sitting in the first row. Yep, that's you, Don. <laughs> it's proof you were here. So that was 2013. And then we went to Fosdem. And we saw all of the familiar signs again. And what is the fun about Fosdem? The fun about Fosdem is that you get to talk to a zillion different communities who all are interested in open source, they're all building stuff, they all have users, they all have communities, and they all, well, come to Belgium to do weird things not everybody should be doing, like drink too much beer. So we had a conflict management room there. Um, I remember sneaking in, because I was sitting on the door, nagging to Nigel, hey, it's me on the other side of the door, and Nigel opened the door, and I could actually get in, and hide somewhere between Patrick and Dean's legs because there was like no place in the room, but I wanted to get in. And it was full. So what if we expanded the one day, the two day puppet camp and actually brought in more communities like Chef folks, Juju folks, Sea of Engine folks, Ansible, everybody. And we discussed it with Bert and it was like, yeah, yeah, let's do this. Um, so after Falls then, 
Eric, nice tweet, like, yeah. We're, we're going to try to solve this. And now we're at the point where basically if, if FOSDEM claims to have between eight and 9,000 people, there's 720 registered for this event, which is really great. And we added a fringe to the fringe event. We had a puppet grand trip summit just, like, just for the puppet folks, one more day, stuck around. And the thing I was trying to achieve that first year was trying to get the impossible lineup. Like, I wanted to have the full history of what happened with conflict management. And this was the lineup five years ago. Complex infrastructure. Luke told us there was still a lot left to do. Do you know what the talk is he's going to give today? <laughs> it's five years later. Um, Adam was talking about how to win friends and influence computers, and something with bananas. So, 2014 was an event where, for me, this picture basically, this is what Conflict Management Camp is about. Who can recognize the picture? Who can recognize who it is? Someone with feet. Someone with feet, yeah. It was the two of you. It was Mark and Luke discussing up there. We had similar pictures. Um, we had Mark Shuttleworth with um, Mitchell. We had a bunch of other people, like people who you, for a lot of us, are impossible to talk to. They're not impossible to talk to. They're right here. You can approach them, you can talk can chat with them. And we saw that the community started to actually mingle, and we started to see that they were learning from each other. We had podcasts recorded live here, and we had a bunch of really great speakers, like James Turbo, Mandy, David. We had a bunch of people who are still around, a bunch of new people. So that was the first name, and everybody was complaining about how do you even pronounce this? It's Config Management Camp. I mean, we have infracoders.eu, but I don't like to mess around with new logos and new sites and new DNS stuff, you know, because DNS is going to break. <laughs> so this is what it is. And most of you have shortcuts for it now. And we are running a little small team with a bunch of people, and we don't really have marketing people, and each time getting a new logo and stuff. So. That's what a name is, and it's going to stick, because it is about infrastructure as code. It's about a lot of things around config management. So while I was going back over the Twitters, I actually realized the secret plan we had. Who knows what the secret plan was? It's a secret. We don't know. The secret plan was to bring James here. <laughs> we succeeded. For some reason, David, I don't know what you started tweeting, but where are you? David is somewhere, I saw you. Yeah. This brought MGMT here. And it was the start of a lot of other traditions. So it was the start of these kind of things. I mean, this for me is the way you get beer. With a beard. More beer, ribs. This is Ghent. So we expanded our horizons. We started adding more tooling. 2015 was the year where we had Kelsey, and he was talking about Cube and CoreOS and doing his fancy live demos. And we had Jess, who was talking about continuous delivery and the fact that branching is still evil. And Mitchell, who not only brought us Vagrant, but by then a bunch of other tools. The year after, we actually had Mark Shuttleworth. I think that's the only astronaut we had. Um, Mitchell was there again, and Garrett. And we had, and that are like about the community, we had a bunch of people who had problems with travel getting here. And then you have people like Mitchell and a person from Google, who I still don't know who, which name he has, who just stood up and said, hey, I'm going to do a talk. Because that's what a community does. We just help out each other. 
And then we had some more ideas. Where's Bernd? We had the idea to go abroad. So if you count, if you've been here five times, actually you could have been to one more. We went to Berlin. We attached Config Management Camp right next to a DevOps days. Uh, we had a one-day track, single track. We had Dom talking about our experiences in the community. We had some weird manager from IBM talking about stuff. <laughs> um, well, that same guy actually also is working really hard getting other communities going, like communities within communities. Who remembers last year? Vaguely, <laughs> mostly. Oh. Uh, that means, if, if you only remember it vaguely, it means we're either doing something really good or something really bad. Kind of depends. So 2017, we had, um, Luz is not saying that config management sucks, because that was actually what I wanted him to say after starting monitoring sucks. He should have said config management sucks. He kind of did that. But, and we had more stuff going on. Keith was talking about infrastructure as code, why we should do it. Um, we had people actually understanding what the learning curve of a bunch of those tools is, like Bosch, great ID. Um, yeah, it's kind of the learning curve for a bunch of people. Um, one of the important things for me was Patrick saying, even though he was doing a lot of serverless and doing a bunch of other things, that configuration management is not going to disappear. It's going to stick around, which is really true because a lot of organizations still have not adopted automation at all. So there's a huge thing to add there. There's one speaker, however, who, no matter how much we tried, we actually never managed to get here. Uh, it's a really good friend of mine. I hope one year we'll get him. There's been a bunch of people who tried. So I hope this, if John sees this, he actually shows up the next time we do something. We can only try. So Berlin. Berlin, we had a chat. We had some discussions, and some people came up with yet another crazy idea. The other crazy idea was Berlin isn't far enough, and we never went to the States. So somewhere August last year, um, we did a crazy thing, and we attached to DevOps Days Portland. And the biggest crazy part of that was getting all the chocolate into the country. Because <laughs> that's what we do. Um, we had a third day after DevOps Days Portland. We had pretty much the same ID um, from Berlin, like a single track event, and run it. And well, I think we did the impossible by almost succeeding to push 11 Ignites into a one hour slot. Kind of worked. And we survived the heat wave. And also, we managed to not set the room on fire and not break insurance policies. But communities at Conflict Management Camp have really been exchanging ideas and talking to each other. I mean, this picture for me is, is, is really what Conflict Management Camp really is about. It's an MGMT <laughs> contributor who tweets about Vox Pupilli um, in the Puppet Contrib Summit, and the Vox Pupilli presenter is wearing a Habitat t-shirt. And then there's a DevOps Days Ghent guy almost bombing the t-shirt. <laughs> You can recognize him, he always wears that. Hi, Stefan. And we mingle further. Um, when we were setting up the schedule, these were kind of the discussions we had. Like, what is Nathan doing in the Ansible room? Well, he's talking about testing with Ansible. What is Greg doing in the Salt room? Well, we're integrating tools, Salt Informa. Um, what is Feeling doing in the Ansible room? Well, he's gonna tell people not to hold Ansible like a puppet. And we see that there's a lot of other learnings, like discussions about queuing, where you realize that the Puppet and the Chef community there had those discussions, and the Ansible community started also having that discussion, but a couple of years later. So they actually could benefit from the experiences the other communities had and learn faster. And communities also started to grow, because they themselves started to add full days. Started with building open source cloud. We had an infrastructure next from Red Hat for those who still remember. Um, 
the Puppet Country Summit, obviously, which I managed to not put on the slide. Um, we had a former construction day. We have the MGT hackathons, um, where all two contributors are contributing. And stuff like Juju. I mean, the year that the Juju folks actually came with a bus. Who remembers that year? We, we failed to find pictures of the bus, sadly. So if anybody has those, it would be great. So these communities have been growing. They've been busy. But the industry, for me, still has not adopted. I still see in the enterprise, even this year, way too many organizations that are doing things manually. I mean, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but you guys should go out and spread the word about configuration management, about infrastructure as code. Honestly, I don't care which tool you get them to use, as long as you get them to use the tool, because it's really hard if you come into an organization and they want you to do like the DevOps adoption dance, and the first thing you realize is, oh, so you're installing everything manually. Yeah, we, we got a lot of work here. So, we need to get our word out. We need to get not only the communities out, but we need to get notice out there that this is still a long way to go. Yeah. Kind of talked about this. Because we learn. We learn a lot. And even we forget we learn. Um, Fabian tweeted a couple of weeks ago that how we do stupid things when we deploy software how people do that in new, modern ecosystems. And we basically realized, yeah, but that's exactly what we did years ago with the other tool until we learned how to do it better. So this is a good lesson. The tool you've used when it was really young might have done things exactly the same way that a new tool does, but they evolved, they learned. A slide I get asked for every year is a slide with how big are these communities now? We call it the lies, damn lies, and statistics one. Um, we were the first year, it's short, somewhere around 360. Now we're north of 700. For some reason, there's a bunch of really small communities that actually have been growing a little bit, but not that much. And then there's a bunch of bigger communities who actually have been growing much more. Um, 2016 was kind of the tipping point where Ansible took over as the most popular tool, however, depending on what you use it for. Um, the most people are interested still in Puppet, Foreman, and Ansible. Those are the three big ones out there. The rest ones, apart from Juju, and I think also apart from, now only, only Juju and sadly also Chef a bit has been declining in interest. So that's an interesting point. We see tools and ideas have been evolving over the years. So why is that? I'm gonna give this to you as a talk. Like, why do you see some tools pop up easier than others. And to me, it's mostly about complexity. I mean, infrastructure is code, and infrastructure is complex. And people will take easier languages to learn from. But I'm old enough to remember that back when I started in IT, we had carpenters and butchers and painters who basically got a training in IT. They got teach Visual Basic, and suddenly they were doing IT. And I'm it's also remembering the kind of crappy software they brought and how long those people typically stuck around in that community or in that business. So I'm kind of fearing that there's going to be a conflict management tool which is going to do stuff like this. Loop stuff, go to all those things. So I want you to think about that and discuss where we should go further with the tools we're adopting and how to deal with those. And that's basically what I want you to do for the next two days, well, three days. I enjoy conflict management camp. That was a look back at the history. Sean, how are we doing on time? <laughs>